Thank you. Following uh, my leader and classmate coming to Congress in 2000, Eric Kanner, needless to say, is a tough act to follow. But you know, when he mentioned that uh, the 1992 riots, I'm a San Diegan. I lived through it. I watched the Circuit City store that didn't have a small merchant on the roof be looted. I watched it when law enforcement was unable to take care of the needs of the people of Los Angeles. That was a failure of law enforcement. What I'm going to tell you about is a failure of law enforcement's leaders, of political leaders that we count on. I come here today to deliver you but a single message. The investigation of Operation Fast and Furious will not end until the full truth is exposed to every American. And that and that the senior officials at the Department of Justice are held appropriately accountable. And yes, that includes Eric Holder. <laughs> when I became chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, I knew just what to expect. My job is, in fact, to be the chief investigator of the Congress, the chief investigator in the Congress, to investigate the administration's wrongdoing, to look for it and to root it out. And vigorous oversight was the requirement of the job I accepted. What I didn't know, but I now know, is that the left wing in the Obama administration and supporting it would gear up. The administration would gear up with lawyers rather than accountants so they could give non-answers rather than real answers and the outside media would attack the credibility of myself, of my committee officials, and those who support us. But in fact, because of courageous patriots like you here today, it has failed. Because of people like you who insist that the truth be known and support us every bit along the way, they have not succeeded in silencing our committee or even Senator Grassley's minority position in the Senate, and for that, I thank you. Like you, I believe the checks and balances that our Founding Fathers enshrined in the Constitution are critical to our liberty. I believe Congress is constitutionally mandated, and we have a duty to enforce all of our laws against, I'm sorry, all of our laws that the executive branch is required to enforce and enforce them fairly. The fact is, the executive branch under this president has done its own, as we said in the 60s, has done its own things. They have, in fact, been wasteful at a level we never expected. They have been disingenuous in their answers. They have, in fact, ignored exactly what this president promised not to ignore. Remember, this president ideally was going to be the president of our dreams because he promised that we would have the most open and transparent government ever and that he would embrace the reforms that our committee is required and constitutionally mandated to do. Unfortunately, our oversight efforts have met a president and his administration that is hostile to us and that, in fact, will not even answer subpoenas with answers, but rather with silence. President Obama has launched an unprecedented attack on the Constitution. We've already seen his blatant disregard for the First Amendment, effectively trampling on freedom of religion. We've seen it with Obamacare, his poster child for government overreach, that at this moment is before the men and women of the Supreme Court. I myself have been able to see him insult the justices while I sat there unable to say anything on the House floor where the President was an invited guest of the Congress and as were the justices. So it should come as no surprise to us that the President then would further try to ridicule the court by interpreting as a professor that they had no such right to read 
reach this decision or that decision. With that attitude by the Chief Executive, if he's given four more years, do you have any doubt what kind of decisions the court would make? When the facts began to, uh, to, to come out about Fast and Furious, no surprise, Democrats in Washington, not around the country, but in Washington, immediately seized on the opportunity to talk about the need for additional gun control laws. It comes as no surprise to me because I hear it every day. But the American people and all of you in this room must scratch your head. What possible justification would come for more gun control when, in fact, existing laws were thwarted? Existing laws were essentially not just ignored, but overridden. Understand that federally licensed gun dealers warned ATF agents about wrongdoers, expressed their concerns, and were ordered to sell anyway. Now, you might, it might be surprised and say, well, it's got to be hard to follow 2,000 weapons that literally walk over the border. And you would be right, except it wasn't 2,000 weapons. 1,400 of those weapons left with but four straw buyers. They're not hard to follow. In fact, political appointees were ordered the ATF and the rest of the uh, team to let them walk. It comes as a surprise to me because every ATF agent, every FBI agent, even Secret Service agents and DE agents I've had an opportunity to speak to have all said we would never do that. And yet, in Operation Fast and Furious, they did that. The Mexican government has reported to us that at least 200 of their citizens have been killed with the weapons that were allowed to walk as a result of Fast and Furious. These, def these deaths, on top of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry's tragic death, were in fact anticipatable and preventable. When I was given the opportunity to partner with Senator Grassley in this investigation, I was given the opportunity because we, in 2010, were honored by the voters to be in the majority. And Senator Grassley had written just a letter asking for more details of an administration that had promised to be open and transparent. He was rebuffed because he was in the minority and didn't have subpoena power. He came to me, and I agreed to help. At that time, I thought this would last but a few days, maybe a few weeks. We could not have imagined that the administration would deliver to us a document and live testimony that was, in fact, an outright lie. We could not imagine the department would stonewall, stonewall us all along the way. We could not imagine that they would say that they never let guns walk when, in fact, the few emails, some 7,000 out of 80,000 documents known to exist, made it clear that Fast and Furious was an organized program from the start designed to walk guns into the hands of the drug cartels in Mexico. These questionable tactics cannot be explained. So when I come to you here today, I don't come here to explain how, in fact, this came to be. I will rely on you to understand that if there is no explanation that makes good sense, that can only be an explanation that makes the sense of ulterior motives of unthinkable proportion. That is our job to get to the bottom of it, and I promise you we will. Let me make We know we know for one thing, we know that people should be held responsible who sit in the office of Attorney General Eric Holder. And let me make one thing perfectly clear. Eric Holder's contempt for Congress and his failure to comply will not go unanswered. And you can count on me.
Many will say in the weeks to come that, in fact, this is now a political season. All of you know that we have asked and worked diligently to get this concluded long before the political season. So the question is, as they continue to stonewall, am I not doing the American people's greatest justice to bring this to a quick, halt, a quick closure in the next few weeks? And that is what I promise you I will do. Now, the Department of Justice believes that it, it gets to decide what Congress gets or doesn't get. In the next few weeks, we will come to a conclusion of deciding whether, in fact, the Constitution, its compelling of us to do oversight, is our decision of the oversight, or, in fact, its unelected bureaucrats, such as Attorney General Eric Holder. Many will say this is a witch hunt. I will tell you, Brian Terry's family has told me just the opposite. They've told me that they cannot believe they cannot get fair answers about this. They cannot believe that a family dedicated to law enforcement cannot, in fact, get the truth from his own country. His own country. Jaime Zapata, an agent not so often talked about, killed in Mexico with weapons not of Fast and Furious, but weapons that knowingly should not have been in the hands of the drug cartel there either, gets even less answers. I commit to you today, I will not quit until both families get the answers they deserve. I pledge you today, I will not stop investigating the waste, the fraud, and abuse in government ever. But most importantly, our constitutional liberties must be defended first and foremost. And Fast and Furious can be seen as nothing else but, in fact, a needless attack on our, our right to keep and bear arms. Because as you promote lawlessness with weapons knowingly, you can reach no conclusion but that the American people will be asked again and again to give up their right to keep and bear arms because lawless individuals are using weapons ill-gotten. I will never, never give up my right to keep and bear arms, and I will never fail to hold those accountable who would try to take ours away. Thank you, and God bless. Congressman, if you'll wait with us just for a moment, uh, one of the great privileges I have as ILA's Executive Director is to present the Defender of Freedom Award. This award is given each year to a person who shows exceptional leadership in defense of American freedom. Congressman, we couldn't be more thankful for your serious investigation into the Fast and Furious scandal. You've led this fight with courage and conviction, and I've seen firsthand how you've been a tremendous ally to the legislative efforts on Capitol Hill. So on behalf of all of us at the NRA, it's my honor to present you with the Defender of Freedom Award and this beautiful replica of the original Bill of Rights. Thank you.